Good old bugs. Come here, dog. Guess what? It's time we chat about one of my favourite cartoon characters and favourite cartoons. Bugs Bunny. While good old Bugs is certainly among the best American cartoons, I don't often hear people discuss the worst of Bugs' escapades. With nearly a century of adventures behind him, Bugs has had his share of not-so-good cartoons. So as much as I love and respect Looney Tunes, let's have some fun and look back at the top six worst Bugs Bunny cartoons. And if you like these cartoons, I totally understand. Take this list with a pinch of salt, because Bugs Bunny is awesome. Also, I've tried to avoid using clip shows, so each cartoon is poor quality on its own right. Anyway, on to the countdown. Bugs Bunny Bustin' Out. No more teacher's dirty looks, yahoo! The 1980s was not a great time for our pal Bugs. Too bad. Mel Blanc was 72 and understandably struggling a bit with the energy after doing Bugs' voice for over half a century. This guy was a freaking legend. Anyway, I can't think of a better example of every joke in a Bugs Bunny cartoon falling so inoffensively flat. We start with seeing an insipid, flavorless flashback to Bugs Bunny running out of school as a kid and running into Elmer Fudd with a pop gun, where they proceed to perform some of the most listless antics I've ever seen from the great Chuck Jones and Mel Blanc. Again, though, it's understandable. It was the 1980s, and this legendary duo had been doing this since the 1930s. Of course the jokes aren't going to be as fresh as they were 50 years ago. Gravity. Oh, uh, that's all right. We haven't studied gravity yet. As well as this, Chuck and Mel ran into some new stringent family-friendly rules in the 80s that meant Warner Brothers could no longer let Elmer Fudd get shot in the face with a rifle or impact the ground with a blam. Generally, the camera will have the character shot or blown up off screen, if at all, which unfortunately completely destroys the comedic value. In fact, Bugs outright saves Elmer Fudd from the fall he sets up. Don't worry, spring is here. Why, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Webber. Which is very nice of him, but it doesn't make for a very funny joke. Bugs Bunny busting out is completely inoffensive, but in the process completely takes the teeth out of Bugs' antics. But this one's at the start of the list because although the jokes don't work, I feel like I'm watching Mel Blanc and Chuck Jones reflect on the last half a century. I'm glad that I'm not young anymore, but you know, I bet Elma and I were the youngest people to ever start chasing each other. I mean, Bugs speaks in this episode like he's a wise older man, reflecting on olden days, and how the world has changed in general. And from that perspective, it's actually quite beautiful to watch. Trouble with this world is that everybody's out to get everybody else. And for number five... Elmer's Pet Rabbit. This Bugs Bunny episode is notorious for Bugs being ridiculously out of character in every way. Listen, Bub, be a little more careful who you call a widow Gray Rabbit. See? As well as him sounding completely different, he acts much more aggressive, arrogant, and thuggish than the calm, cool Bugs Bunny we know. In fact, this Bugs Bunny doesn't even eat carrots. I'll starve before I'll eat this stuff. Let me clarify that. Bugs Bunny states that he does not eat carrots. On top of that, the jokes are unusually unfunny for a Looney Tunes cartoon. By the end, this Bugs Bunny gangster lookalike gets so strangely obnoxious that I was actually rooting for Elmer Fudd to cook him. And why is Bugs wearing yellow dishwashing gloves anyway? What happened to his white gloves? Admittedly though, this is the second Bugs Bunny cartoon ever made. And clearly Termite Terrace and Mel Blanc were still helping the rabbit find his feet. And after all the things I've done to him in this picture. Number four. <laughs> Looney Tunes Show, episode Fish and Visitors. There are certainly episodes I like of this modern take on Bugs Bunny. And as others have mentioned, Lola's character really helps bring the show alive. <laughs> wow, that was a good movie. 
And now, your feature presentation. But jeebus, some of these episodes, they really do get wrong. The worst episodes of Looney Tunes show tend to be full of awkward dialogue and long, unfunny pauses. Probably my least favorite episode of the series is Fish and Visitors. There's this odd trope in some cartoons where a friend or enemy will stay over at the main character's house, intrude upon their privacy, wreck their house and make them miserable. But the main character is always too polite to say anything so they can tolerate this from days to months on end. And I personally think it's among the stupidest tropes in all of cartoons. We all know exactly what's going to happen. Daffy and Bugs are eventually going to say, they can't take it anymore. They'll snap at Yosemite Sam and kick him out. I've always found this shtick weird and uncomfortable and I can't figure out why it's so common in cartoons. I mean, it almost physically hurts to watch Daffy and Bugs reluctantly slump around resentfully as Yosemite Sam trashes their house. Because we can feel the character's resentment and building up anger and it's just awful. The visit is always ungrateful, rude, and completely oblivious, and it's just a predictable, aggravating cliché. In my opinion, this one is the worst of the Looney Tunes show episodes. It's true, Doc. You can't stay with us anymore. I can take a hint. Well, not really. We've dropped a ton of them. And the third worst bug... <laughs> All this and rabbit stew. Wanna catch me a it's hard for the jokes to fully work in this cartoon because, well, they're heavily racially insensitive, even by 1940s standards. Uh, what's up, Doc? But you know, as racist as it is, I actually thought the jokes on a base level were okay. Mel Blanc and Danny Webb, both understandably uncredited, deliver solid, enthusiastic voices that suit the context of their roles. Uh -oh. And there are so many gags packed into this one. Small quick gags like the plunger with the skunk or the bear reveal were quick and actually would be funny. It's just a shame the jokes had to be ruined by the prevalent racism. I mean, I originally saw this cartoon when I was about six, and at the time, I didn't even notice the colour of the hunter's skin. I thought he was just a silly hunter. But now that I've grown up, it's certainly more uncomfortable now. And the second worst Bugs Bunny card. Prehysterical hair. Shh. Be very, very quiet. Me hunt saber tooth rabbit. Many, many years ago, in 1958, a major musician strike took place, forcing Warner Brothers to outsource to Capitol Records giving them some of the most awkward, oddly out-of-place music in all of the Looney Tunes shorts. And Prehysterical Hair was the culmination of these problems and more, combining poorly drawn characters with a terribly voiced Elmer Fudd and stock music to make one of the lousiest Bugs Bunny cartoons ever to be made. For example, here we have Bugs cozying up at home to watch an old movie. So what music is suitable for this? <laughs> Oh yes, this is exactly what I think of when I think Bugs Bunny. Single note stock footage with all the forethought of a Kmart gift card. All the gags are rehashed, listless, and hastily slapped together, giving us none of the freshness we'd normally expect from Looney Tunes classics. Prehysterical hair is one of the few real stinkers in the original Looney Tunes cartoons. And before we get to number one, let's go through some quick honorable mentions. Space Jam. This one's a guilty pleasure for me, because as a kid, this was my favorite movie. Actually, my biggest complaint was that Bugs Bunny's voice actor sounded so different from Mel Blanc. I'll uh, be with you in a second, folks, after I finish with Nature Boy here. Looney Tunes back in action. Sadly, this is the first movie I ever walked out on. But not the last. It's hard to not see back in action as a missed opportunity that doesn't manage any of the magic of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. The two main actors deliver very indifferent performances that just don't mesh well with Bugs and Daffy. Bugs Bunny nips the nips. Somehow, this cartoon manages to be even more racially insensitive to Japanese than it was to African Americans. 
very much a propaganda cartoon. This one is even more uncomfortable than all this in Rabbit Stew because of its heavy World War II themes. And even without the racism, the jokes in this one are slow and not even that clever. They just kind of feel mean. Wabbit, a Looney Tunes cartoon. Overall, I like that this new series is uniquely stylized in its animation. And although the jokes didn't tend to work for me, I appreciated trying to take Bugs in a relatively new, modernized direction. Anyway, here we go. And the number one... Baby Looney Tunes. Want to see something so saccharine that you want to vomit? Something that is labeled Looney Tunes but has voices so sickly sweet, pandering and aggravating that it causes continual convulsions to the viewer? Then may I present to you Baby Looney Tunes. Baby Looney Tunes as a whole is just terrible. But let's focus on what I consider their worst episode, Never Say Try. The script just has zero intelligence. None. Let's start building that kite. <laughs> the first things you'll need. Every line is badly voiced, awkward, and completely stock, as though the entire storyboard was passed onto a foreign laundromat. It's basically about young Looney Tunes helping out Granny and playing around, because everything is so revoltingly wonderful. This cartoon is so sickly out of character for the Looney Tunes that I blotted this stupid cartoon out of my memory until the last minute. It's hard to be more insulting to the grandfather of comedic animation than by creating a baby spin-off. I want to clarify that there's a difference between good messages in cartoons and the trend of soulless, socially responsible messages jammed down our kids' throats, having all the flavor of a dried out slab of tofu. In fact, this cartoon has just stripped all the guts out of the original Looney Tunes cartoon. All the freedom, the free wielding insanity, the wit, and laughter. And replaced it with soulless, age-appropriate junk. And you should play games to have fun, not just to win. <sighs> so in the episode, Never Say Try, all the Looney Tunes make kites. Ugh. And we're two minutes in and they're still building kites. Seriously, did kids actually find this entertaining? Then they all fly their kites. But oh no, Sylvester crashes his kite and never wants to see a kite again. That's it. I'm never gonna try blowing a bubble again. So he decides he never wants to try chewing gum again. Oh, I wonder where they're going with this message. And we're only three minutes in. It just keeps going like this. Then we have to watch Granny doing ballet with the kids. Oh, that's it. I I'm sorry, I'm done. I cannot stand this show. Baby Looney Tunes is just overly safe, pusillanimous pap, with Looney Tunes slapped on the front to attract kids' attention. It's just a slap in the face to Looney Tunes, Bugs Bunny, and everything the cartoon stood for. I personally consider Baby Looney Tunes, the absolute worst Bugs Bunny cartoon. Though as much as I've pointed out the occasional negative cartoons, the spirit of Bugs Bunny remains almost consistently in the majority of cartoons. No matter how often Warner Brothers makes mistakes with Looney Tunes over nearly a century, Bugs almost never changes from that calm, likable, mischievous rabbit so many of us enjoy. And overall to me, Looney Tunes remains one of, if not the, greatest American cartoon of all time. Do you think I missed a particularly bad Bugs Bunny cartoon? If you think so, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.